Hey guys, long time no see. Unfortunately, I've been a little under the weather for most of the past couple of months. But uh, hey, it's Saturday. I'm here. So uh, let's get started with this video report. Uh, first things first, uh, as you may have noticed here earlier in the week, I fired Dwayne Connors. Uh, Dwayne, nice guy, lousy handicapper. Uh, one of those peak and valley handicapper. A guy who would win seven or eight days out of ten and then go on horrific losing streaks. Uh, the most recent one, he had lost 24 out of 36 days after failing with the New York Giants against Dallas on Monday. Those are the type of handicappers that absolutely destroy gamblers. They destroy your bankrolls. Hell, they destroy my business. Uh, what you want and what you can live with is a guy, one, who can make you money, or a guy who can win you some money, he's going to inevitably lose you some money because nobody wins every single day in this business. But listen, we are action junkies. We want to win some. We know and acknowledge up front that we are going to lose some. But at the end of the day and at the end of the season, at the end of the year, we want to make more than we lose. And that includes the VIG. But peak and valley handicappers, they will never do that. And Dwayne Connors was one of those guys. And it wasn't just this football season. It was during the baseball season. It was at the end of last year in the basketball season when I first brought him here on the site. Again, he would go on these great little winning streaks where he would win 10 out of 14 days. And then he would immediately follow with a horrific losing streak where he would lose 17 out of 24 days. You can't deal with that type of consistent inconsistency. And that's why he's no longer at the site. I brought on two new handicappers that have each made their debut here in the past couple of days, uh, Stephen D'Angelo and Mitch Newman. I'm not going to bore you here and tell you who they are. You can read their brief biographies on their site. You can sample their wares through the All Access Pass. And let's see how they do. Uh, I vetted them. I've known both of them for a little while now. I've monitored their plays, and I like the way they present their analysis. There are no guarantees that they will win either, because as I've been telling you for years, there are no guarantees in gambling, but I know one thing, they possibly can't possibly do any worse than Dwayne Connors, who's out of here. So let's move forward. Uh, marquee games today. Well, there's that little game going on in Tuscaloosa between Alabama and LSU. I will tell you what I've said from the first days when I got into this business many years ago. The marquee games are always the toughest ones to win. They're the greatest ones to talk about. When I had my own sports talk radio show, uh, when I was on TV, listen, these are the games you want to talk about, not necessarily the ones you want to gamble on. The beautiful thing about a busy Saturday card, whether it's in college basketball or in college football, there's volumes of games, right? The marquee games, they always have the sharpest lines. They're always the most difficult games to bet on. That's why I generally take a pass on them. Penn State, Minnesota is another game. Now I'm going to talk about both of those games in a minute, but to me, they're not the best games on the board. Now to me, the best game on the board happens to be Oklahoma, Iowa State. That's neither here nor there. But again, marquee games, and if you think about it, they're always the toughest ones to win. Uh, in terms of who has the big play today, that would be Scott Delaney, the fifth ever 200 dime uh, W wager college football release in his 17 year career. It's on USC and Arizona State. It matches his 200 dime winner on Thursday night with Temple over South Florida. And it also matches his 200 dime winner in the national championship game last year when Clemson kicked Alabama's ass. And just like Temple on Thursday, you get it for over half price off by using coupon code DOUBLE, D-O-U-B-L-E. So, with that being said, all your other discounts and promo codes are over on the homepage. Let's get to your complimentary plays today. Uh, the first one, I'm going to go with a game on the nighttime card. I'm going to go with Fresno State. Now, Fresno State, I am well aware with how the Bulldogs have been playing uh, some inconsistent ball here of late. But they did win last week at Hawaii, and I'm aware of that because... I had Hawaii, a game in which uh, Hawaii had a nice, comfortable lead until Fresno outscored the Rainbow Warriors in Honolulu, 27-14 to 14 in the second half, and ultimately won that game on the last second field goal. Uh, Fresno State in that game uh, accumulated a season-high 
514 total yards. Now, how Fresno State lost the week before at home to Colorado State 41-31 is beyond me. But today, Fresno State is hosting a Utah State squad. That has been mildly disappointing, to say the least. Uh, Utah State last year was just one of those teams that everybody was riding, including me, relentlessly. But early this season, in one of the video reports, I pointed out that the Utah State team that you were seeing this year had nothing in common with last year's team because the offense had lost 9 of 11 starters. Now, it was nice that one of those starters coming back happened to be the quarterback, Jordan Love, but he didn't have a lot of talent around him, and it showed. Uh, Utah State's defense, not as strong as last year's team either. Last two games, the Aggies have been outscored 73-21 to by Air Force and BYU. Uh, destroyed by BYU 42-14 to last week. Allowed 639 yards, 418 of them coming through the air. The week before, they couldn't stop Air Force on the ground. And now you have a Fresno State team that is pretty well balanced. Uh, Fresno averages 244 yards in the air, 165 yards on the ground, and that ground game has really been cranking here of late, last three games. Fresno has averaged 246 yards on the ground. That translates to seven yards per carry. So I think Fresno coming back home after the upset of Hawaii, a mild upset actually, because it was actually Fresno State went off and that went in almost a virtual pick em game. I like the price in this game. Five and a half points with Fresno against a Utah State team that has been troubled, uh, been troubled scoring, having trouble scoring, and stopping anyone. I think it's a good play with Fresno State, minus the points. Uh, on the early card, uh, Boston College is a two and a half point favorite at home today against Florida State. Uh, Boston College, of course, coming off a 58 27 beatdown of Syracuse, a game in which uh, David Bailey and A.J. Dillon combined for a monstrous game. Uh, Dillon had 242 yards, Bailey 172 yards, 496 total yards rushing for Boston College. Do I think that they're going to run for that much against Florida State? No. But here's the thing with Florida State. You saw where they fired Willie Taggart earlier this week. This is a program in disarray right now. And you got Boston College, a team that has to win this game, in my view today, to become bowl eligible because it's not going to get any easier because their final two games, well, they're at Notre Dame and Pittsburgh. And I don't see Boston College winning either of those two games because they better win their, uh, I think it's their home finale today. So BC minus two and a half. And if this game goes up to three, which I don't think it will, then you go ahead and buy down the half point. But the bottom line is, you know, uh, Willie Tanger got fired for a reason. One, they lost to Miami of Florida. No. A 27-10 loss isn't because of why he got fired. It's because they had been underachievers for so long during his one-and-a-half-year tenure. The offensive line is in disarray. They gave up 10, nine sacks to Miami of Florida last week. Now, Boston College doesn't have nearly as good of a pass rush as Miami of Florida. But still, Florida State is a bad team, a team that hasn't been able to get anything going offensively. I don't think in less than one week after firing a Taggart, they're suddenly going to get it all together, go on the road and play a magnificent game. It just doesn't work that way. That's why I'm going to lay the points with Boston College. Let's talk about the Alabama game. The line is down to six points. I look at Alabama here, and when I think about why I went against Alabama in the national championship game, and I had a monster play on Clemson, and you remember what Clemson did. Can, is Clemson, or excuse me, is LSU as good as Clemson? Absolutely not. Why did Clemson beat Alabama last year? Because Clemson had a tremendous defense. Does LSU? No. Because Clemson had team speed and had a great running back game. Does LSU? No. Okay. Quarterback position? Let's say that LSU is the equal because they have a slight advantage of wide receiver in the quarterback play. Let's say that Burrow is slightly better than Lawrence. Just for argument's sake, because of the receiver and the quarterback kind of going this way, let's say it's even. But I still say that Clemson is a far better team, last year's version versus this LSU team. And this game, of course, is being played in Tuscaloosa. Now, we saw that Alabama could not contend with Clemson's athleticism with Clemson's speed. I don't think LSU has that speed. 
Uh, Alabama's defense is not that good. LSU's defense is not that good either. I think the key for Alabama today will be to establish the ground game and attack the soft underbelly, the middle of that LSU defense. The big question mark here, the elephant in the room, shall we say, is how healthy is Tua? Three weeks removed from that surgery. Remember, against Oklahoma back then, remember the last time he had that surgery on the opposite leg, the opposite heel? He had four weeks to recover. How healthy is he going to be? That's why I think Saban's going to come out and establish the run here. It's a six-point number. It's in Tuscaloosa, where Alabama's won, what, 31 straight games, and most of them haven't even been close. And then I think back to LSU against Auburn at home a few weeks ago. Auburn stymied that LSU offense, held them in check in Baton Rouge. That worries me. So if I was to play that game, I would lean toward Alabama just because they're home. The other thing I would think about is maybe putting Alabama in a teaser. A lot of people would grab LSU plus the points, not me. I would take Alabama down. And a two-team six-pointer, I would take Alabama down and team them with somebody else. That's the way I look at that game. Penn State and Minnesota. Minnesota's undefeated 8-0. Oh. Let me tell you. Oh, let me ask you this. Who has Minnesota played? South Dakota State, Fresno State, Georgia Southern, Purdue, Illinois, Nebraska, Rutgers, and Maryland. Uh, cupcakes. Little sisters of the poor. Absolute nobodies. At least Penn State has played some tough teams along the way. Okay, yeah, they played Idaho and Buffalo and Maryland and Purdue, but at least they won, went to Iowa and they won. Uh, they beat Michigan at home. They won at Michigan State. This is going to be strength versus strength. Minnesota loves to run the ball, averages like 247 yards a game. Uh, Penn State gives up like 2.8 yards per carry. Penn State's offense has struggled here of late. It's an interesting number, though, here in the game. Six and a half points. Could you possibly put Penn State in this teaser? You could. Or do you take Minnesota plus to 12 and a half in a two-teamer? That's the question. I don't know which way to go here. I'm not a big James Franklin fan with Penn State. Don't have a lot of confidence. In, I think this Penn State offense too often settles for field goals, especially in red zone opportunities, instead of coming away with touchdowns. That worries me here. Lean a little towards Penn State, but I like Alabama more in the two marquee games today. But ultimately, I think Fresno State is the best play, followed by Boston College. Alabama would be number three. That'll do it, guys. I wish you well, and talk to you soon here. Good luck here on this Saturday.